early and probably didn't feel great or, or whatever the thing was. There was definitely, I don't disagree with you. There was something off with him. So that's why I was saying when he was asking me about what do you do with Ortega now, you let Ortega rest and, and heal himself and figure out whatever's going on with him. And then when, when we feel that he's right, we'll, we'll talk about a fight again. For sure. And last one for me. I know uh, we're less than three months out from no GFC, and I know you guys had a lot on your plate this week, but is there a timeline when we can expect an announcement for the main event and all that stuff for that? Yeah, so today... Today was a big day because uh, our board of directors and a bunch of other people flew out today and wanted to see where the fuck all this money was going. So uh, I walked everybody through the, uh, I have this, you know how I am with these rooms, you know. I have to see things on a wall and I have to, you can't just talk to me and, and, and I can't do it in my head. Like these guys will call me up fucking, Sean Mickin Hunter call me up and say, all right, we, we want to move this fight, we want to do this fight. Like, stop, stop talking to me. I'll see you in the war room. We go in the war room, I look at it, I can see it. So I built this whole, I built this whole room out that walks you through exactly what's gonna uh, happen at the Sphere. So I walked everybody through it today. I mean, our board of directors and, and all the other guys that came in were just fucking blown away and everybody's so pumped about this thing. Um, I don't know what the hell you asked me, but the fights will be announced soon. Is that what you asked me? Yeah, we'll announce the fight soon. Um, because there's a lot of uh, production that, that has to start like tomorrow on this thing. Thank you, Dana. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be the most incredible fucking thing that anybody has ever seen in sports. Dana, in Dana. the sphere, it's going to be incredible. Hey. In the sphere, it's going to be incredible. How do you make it incredible for the people watching on pay per view? Boom. Great question, my brother. So, normally when we do a fight, we have a truck, you know, there's going to be four trucks for this event. There's gonna be four trucks. And we have assembled like literally the most rock star team on the planet. When I eventually get you guys in and walk you through what we're doing, I mean, the amount of Oscars, Emmys, Grammys, bip, 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 the list goes on and on, that the team that we've assembled to pull this thing off. But there will be a director who will just be filming the inside of the sphere to make people at home feel like they're there. What we're gonna attempt to pull off, I told you a million times, you're like, oh, he's always fucking, I'm telling you right now, this will never, ever be replicated. Nobody will ever do this again. It won't make sense for anybody. It's, it's, it's just too much money. This will be a, the, one, of, one of the greatest things you've ever seen live, and, and we're gonna try to pull off one of the greatest things you've ever seen on TV, too. Awesome, just one question for me, one more. Uh, Ian Gary said that you guys offered him Colby Covington is that true? And, and did Colby well, he was screaming at us through the octagon. I want Colby Covington next. Did Colby reject the fight before? Did he give you a reason no, no, at no. all? Or? Col Col Colby doesn't reject fights. Colby will fight. Thanks. Yep. Dana, Dana just one right here yep. in the back. Right. Uh, so speaking of uh, short notice fights and everything like that, your production team coming down to the wire with everything going on. I know you're always high praise of them. What did you make of everything going on tonight? I got the best team in, in all of sports, man. I'm telling you. Uh, we had to – Hunter. What, what time do you think we did the weigh-ins? Yeah, yeah. We did the weigh-ins at 6.30 tonight. So we had to do the weigh-ins. They had to edit. They had to cut. You know, had to build, you know, come up with this whole promo. They didn't even know. We told them, like, maybe 20 minutes before that. So these guys are ridiculously badass. Our production team is the best in the world. I also, I also want to follow up one quick thing. Um, you were talking to Kevin earlier about you know, weight classes and everything. Um, do you feel like Diego's and just this co-main as a whole that kind of, in a way, just looking at 165, would you ever be open to the idea still of trying to open up a 165 division or not really? Never, ever. Not while I'm here. Dana, right yeah. back here. Uh, Dana, International Fight Week, obviously all week you had the convention, you also had the Hall of Fame. How happy are you with what you were able to bring to the fans leading up to fight night in terms of the festivities? Am I happy about it? Or just uh, how do you feel about everything came together and what you were able to bring to the fans and can you tease something new in the years to come to improve it? Well, well that's what International Fight Week is and every year we try to bring something different and new. Um, I thought what was cool this year is the deal that we did with Tops and me and Ruben went out there and you know, Ruben was giving all those cards away. I mean, some, some, of, those, some of those groups of cards are worth $4,000, $5,000. Um, and they were literally, we did this, uh, you know, opening, and 
he gives those cards away. I, I love that and, and, and lots of other things that we've tried. And yeah, I, I uh, and Power Slap. Who went to Power Slap last night? It was fucking awesome. We had, a, we had an unbelievable night last night with, with Power Slap. And um, the answer is yes. Love International Fight Week and always trying to come up with new fun things for the fans. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, perhaps it's very premature to ask this, but Ecuador, I'm from Ecuador, and all the Ecuadorians would like to know if we can be able to see Michael Morales on Sphere on September. What's the question? Oh, we haven't announced the card yet, sir. This event would be like the best of the all of events again in. UFC? What's he asking me? Is what? Oh, well, first of all, I will tell you this about the sphere. It, it will be the biggest gate of all time, number one. Number two, it won't be the greatest UFC event of all. It will be the greatest sporting event of all time. This is gonna, did any of you see U2? Has anybody gone there and seen U2? Okay, very few of you. Did any of you see the other thing? The other, what is that, life or whatever the hell that thing is? You saw it? And, and what was your opinion? What did you think? So what's crazy is, I don't want to tell too much because we have a documentary coming out that you guys got to watch, but um, Tom Brady called me and said, you want to go to U2 with me? I said, when is it? He said, this weekend. I said, I'm in. I went to U2 and I watched the show. And halfway through the show, I was like, holy shit. This is incredible. And immediately I realized that U2 was not the star of the show. The Sphere is the star of the show. And what they had done was cool and whatever. We are going to take this thing to a level that it's just... And I've told you about my, my... What I think of Mexican people, right? One of the baddest human beings that have ever walked the face of the earth are Mexican. Mexican people are very tough, durable people that work hard, um, you know, they support each other, and um, very loyal to other Mexican people. They'll work hard all week and spend their entire paycheck to support other Mexican people. And this, this show is literally going to be a love letter to the people of Mexico. Their history, their heritage, their toughness, their durability, and their future. It's, I'm telling you, bless you, sir. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. I'm really, really, really pumped up and excited about this, so, if you can't tell. Real quick, Dana, um, I assume you were too busy the last couple of days to see the NHL draft at the Sphere, but- did Yes, you, I was. Did you get any feedback maybe from what they what, were able to do from your team of what they saw? What I did see was how they did the, uh, you know, the, the, the rankings went all over, the, or the draft thing went all the way up. That's going to be like fucking kids playing with crayons <laughs> compared to what we're going to do. Literally. Kids playing with crayons. Dana? Yeah. You're right. Yep. Um, can you, with Alex Pereira, can you just talk about him bringing life back to the light heavyweight division? It's always been the glamour division of the UFC. Tito, Chuck, John Jones. Then after John Jones, it was just bleh for a little bit, and now he's brought brought life back to it. Well, that's rude. Um, <laughs> yes, you're right. Uh, it, 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 he has. And, and that's why, you know, everybody wants to see him jump the heavyweight so fast. I, I want to see him fight some more guys in that division. So, um, yes, the answer is yes. Yeah, he sure has. Um, can you, when Myra Bueno Silva ran over to you after her fight, what was she saying to you? She was spraying blood all over me and Ari Emanuel. Uh, I had blood on my face, on my head, on my suit, in my mouth. Uh, she said, can I jump out of the octagon? And I fucked up and said, yes. I should have said, I'll talk to you in a little while. Um, but she, you know what she was saying. She's tough. She's like, this is bullshit. She shouldn't have stopped this fight. And I said, no, this was a good stoppage. You have a nasty cut on your forehead, and uh, you're bleeding all over us. And uh, my, my final question, it's a little older news, but you know, you've been around the fight game for a long, long time. What, was, what were your thoughts on Ryan Garcia? He was acting crazy up until the fight, then everyone was like, he's not fit to fight, then he says he was faking the fight, goes out there, beats Devin Haney, tested positive. 
What was your thoughts on this whole fiasco? Well, first of all, none of that is any of my business. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not my card. It's not my whatever. But I think that with all, you know, I hate talking about drug testing, but with all of our knowledge that we have in the years that we've been drug testing, we believe the people who handle the drug testing that he had tainted, he, he took a tainted supplement and that he did not cheat. And, you know, if he had the right people around him and had the right, you know, that wouldn't have happened. We, we, we're, we're pretty confident it was a tainted supplement. I got no skin in this game. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? It's not my fight. It's not none of my business and not my place to even talk about it. But from what my team tells me, and these guys are the fucking best, tainted supplement. Data right here in the front. Yep. You're right here. Um, we've talked. We've talked about strikers over the years. Anderson Silva is one of the most decorated strikers. Israel Adesanya is, is Alex Pereira now the best striker that you have ever seen in the octagon? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know. I mean, to have to, you know, Shogun Hua. I mean, there's so so many guys that have that have been here. Um, but there's no doubt about it. Like that gentleman just said, he brought back excitement and you know energy to the light heavyweight division and uh and he's a bad boy man kicks punches the way he uh, his defense the way he blocks punches he, he's he's definitely up there one more for me in terms of meteoric rises have you ever seen somebody ascend as fast as Alex Pereira we saw how quickly Conor McGregor moved up but right. I think this is even faster yeah no we have um Israel too I mean you got you got to give it to Israel especially these guys that came from you know one dimensional sports um, and then they're able to come here and compete like they have. It's, it's very impressive. Um, but he's definitely one of the fastest. I mean, that, that actually might be a, a stat, right? Isn't he like, is he the fastest? Fastest double champ ever. So the answer is yes. What the fuck I was just babbling about before that. Yeah, the answer is yes. Hey, uh, in less than three years, Alex Perez got eight wins, you know, titles in two different weight classes. Do you think he's the face of MMA? Um, but yeah, listen, you saw it tonight, what happens when he walks in. Um, I think, I, I, I told you, what I tell you? Third and fourth highest gates are him. Yeah, third and fourth highest gates are him. So, you know, I, I don't know if he's the face, but he's definitely one of the biggest stars in the sport. What were you talking to uh, Dan and Lopez about through the fence after their fight? I was talking about... To Dan and oh, when I went up there, no, I just I just told them thank you and you know we we respect you guys so much and you know when when guys do what these guys did, it's it's like if you look at the people who stepped up in the last like, three three events or whatever it is, look at Whitaker. I mean, Whit Whitaker just went through this same exact thing, and I said the night at the press conference, I don't care what you try to say, I don't know what anybody's going to say about that. Fucking Alice Karoff is a bad dude, man. And, and, and to have that switched out, and especially uh, where he was sitting in the rankings, uh, Whitaker, for him to accept that fight and take it, it's just it's, it's a different day and age, man. Th these guys are all built different than, than, than back in the day. And you have to give a lot of credit to the coaches. I mean, I don't know if you remember back in the fucking day when those guys wouldn't let John Jones fight fucking Chael Sonnen on short notice. Thank God those fucking days are gone, okay? That's the silliest, silliest thing I've ever seen in the history of the sport. So you got to give, give a lot of uh, uh, credit to the, to the camps and the coaches. Yeah. And um, changing pace a little bit, Callum Walsh, the Irish boxer, he's been around the fight week. Did you see his fight earlier this month? Who, who'd you say? Callum Walsh. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love Callum Walsh, yeah. Ca Callum Walsh has been like a, a fun project for me, man. I, I love the kid. Uh, you know, Freddie Roach really believes in him, and uh, last year we're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna do a fight with him in Ireland. Last, so. last year, you told me that he would be one year away from a world title shot. Do you still think he's coming? We're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a big fight with him in Ireland for a world title. Yeah, I don't I don't know if it's a world. I don't know what the title is. Yeah. Um, this is Tom Loeffler is his promoter. Yeah, this is like I'm doing this for fun.